Hello everyone. Electromagnetic induction part 3 inductance. In this video, I will be discussing about inductance. So, first we shall see what we mean by inductance. Inductance introduction. An electric current can be induced in a coil by flux change produced by another coil in its vicinity or flux change produced by the same coil. It can be seen that the flux through a coil is proportional to the current, that is phi b, which is the flux, is proportional to i, the current. When the geometry of the coil does not vary with time, we can write d phi by by dt, which is the rate of change of flux, is proportional to the rate of change of current. Now, for a closely wound coil of n turns, the same magnetic flux is linked with all the turns. When the flux phi b through the coil changes, each turn contributes to the induced EMF. Therefore, a term called flux linkage is used, which is equal to n times phi b for a closely wound coil. And this term n phi b is proportional to current i. Now, the constant of proportionality in the relation n phi b proportional to i is called the inductance. It depends only on the geometry of the coil and intrinsic material properties of the coil. Inductance is a property of a coil. It is analogous to capacitance in the case of a capacitor. Inductance is a scalar quantity and its SI unit is Henry. There are two types of inductance, namely self-inductance and mutual inductance. First, we shall see about the mutual inductance. When the flux produced by a variable current in one coil, usually called primary, links with a closely situated coil called secondary, there is a to be mutual induction. This is what occurs in the case of a transformer. We can say that if I2 is the current flowing in the secondary coil, the flux linkages with the primary coil is proportional to the current in the secondary coil. That is, N1 phi 1 will be proportional to I2 and N1 phi 1 is equal to M12 into I2, where M is the mutual inductance of the coil 1 with respect to 2. That is, mutual inductance of the primary with respect to the secondary and is also referred to as the coefficient of mutual induction. Similarly, if I1 is the current flowing in the primary coil, the flux linkages with the secondary coil is proportional to the current in the primary coil. That is N2 phi 2 will be proportional to I1 and N2 phi 2 will be equal to M21 into I1. Here M21 is the mutual inductance of the secondary with respect to primary. Now we can see the case of mutual inductance of two long coaxial solenoids. For that we can consider two very long coaxial solenoids of length L. The radius of the inner smaller solenoid is R1 and it consists of N1 turns while the radius of the larger solenoid is R2 and it consists of N2 turns. Now, when current I2 is set up in S2, which is the second solenoid, bigger solenoid, a magnetic flux is S1 denoted by phi1. Flux linkage with S1 that is N1 phi1 is equal to M12 into I2 where M is the mutual inductance of the S1 with respect to S2. Now, N1 phi1 can be written as 
small letter n1 l where n1 is the number of turns per unit length into pi r1 square which is the area into mu0 m2 i2 which is the magnetic field of the solenoid therefore we can write m12 is equal to mu0 n1 n2 into pi r1 square l now when current i1 is set up in s1 the smaller inner solenoid it sets up a magnetic flux in s2 denoted by phi2 and we can write the flux linkage with s2 n2 phi2 is equal to m21 i1 now since in this case majority of the flux is in the smaller coil itself of radius r1 we can write n2 phi2 is equal to n2 into l into phi r1 square into mu0 n1 i1 therefore we can write m21 is equal to mu0 n1 n2 phi r1 square l so from 1 and 2 we can see that m12 is equal to m21 now we can see a relation between induced dmf and mutual inductance for that we have to consider two coils c1 and c2 in the case of c2 a current will flow if the key k is closed and if the current starts flowing it produces a change in magnetic flux which will induce an electric current in c1 now the flux linkage due to c1 is given by n1 phi1 is equal to m into i2 since i2 is the current flowing in the coil c2 now for current varying with time we can write d by dt of n1 phi1 is equal to d by dt of m into i2 now emf induced in coil c1 epsilon 1 by faraday's law is given by negative d of n1 phi1 by dt therefore epsilon 1 is equal to minus m into d into i2 by dt this is the relation between the induced emf and mutual inductance now we can see the concept of self inductance in this case it consists of a single coil and in this case when the current increases or current decreases and em in the opposite direction of the current is induced and this emf is called back emf and it is given by epsilon is equal to minus l into di by dt when the electric current in a coil changes the magnetic flux linked with that coil also changes consequently an emf is induced in the coil this type of induction is called self induction and the induced emf is called back emf the induced emf opposes the change of current according to lenz's law for a coil of n turns the same magnetic flux is linked with all the turns Therefore, we use the term flux linkage which is equal to n into phi v in this case. The flux linkages n phi b is proportional to i. So, n phi b is equal to l into i. And here, l which is the constant of proportionality is called the self-inductance of the coil. Self-inductance of a long solenoid. Now, consider a long solenoid. And the magnetic field produced by the solenoid due to a current I flowing through it is B. And the value of B is given by mu0 into n into I, where n is the number of turns per unit length. Now the total flux linked with the solenoid is n into phi B. That's equal to n into L into mu0 ni into A. That is equal to mu0 n square a into l into i here 
n is the number of turns per unit length, a is the area, l is the length of the solenoid, i is the current flowing through the solenoid. Now self-inductance l is given by n phi b by i. That is equal to mu0 n square a into l. Now we can see an expression for the energy stored in the inductor. We have already seen that in the case of a coil, when the current starts flowing, an EF, EMF in the opposite direction is induced. For the current to really flow in the coil, it has to overcome this. For that, the rate of work done is given by dW by dt is equal to epsilon into i. Here epsilon is the induced dm that is given by dw by dt is equal to li di by dt since epsilon is equal to l di by dt now the total amount of work done in establishing the current i can be found out by integrating dw that is w is equal to integral dw that is integral 0 to i li dot di which becomes half li square. So this is the formula for the energy stored in an inductor. So this is the end of this video. In this video, I have mainly discussed about inductance and also the two types of inductances which are mutual inductance and self-inductance. If you have got any doubt in any of the topics discussed in this video, please comment in the section below. Thank you.